Are you serious right now? Uh, are, are you serious? Hey everyone, Steve here from Big Head Tech and we have an MSI RX 5700. I don't have a fire extinguisher handy. Hopefully this is not a repeat of the Mech OC. And if you haven't seen that review, check out Steve from Gamers Nexus. He did a tear down on where they went wrong. And I'm going to tear this car down too because, um, well, I got to do the testing first, obviously, but I'm not 100% convinced that this is going to work flawlessly, giving MSI's track record on these cars, but we'll take a look. And let's go ahead right into the test system, and then we'll go into the benchmarks, then we'll go down to the teardown, conclusion, and then maybe, just maybe, there might be another video. Standard test bench, Ryzen 5 3600 with PBO enabled, a set of G-Skill memory, 3600 megahertz, 16 gigabyte kit, CL19, ASRock B450 Pro 4 motherboard, uh, we have a crucial 500 gigabyte NVMe P1 SSD. We have three products from Be Quiet, the Silent Base 801, the Dark Rock Pro 4, think about it for a second. They give me a lot of products and the Pure Power 11 600 watt 80 plus gold power supply. Big shout out to them because they basically supplied almost half the test system. Uh, that's what we're working with today. That is my standard test bench. Couple assumptions to be made. First assumption is the background or the primary display is always 1440p. Secondary display is going to be 1080p. Games are run at both 1440 and 1080p. I have motion blur off when able. The settings should be listed in the actual, uh, in each set of benchmarks there. So you should be good with that. And during the games only, I do have four Chrome tabs open. And one was playing a video. During the synthetics, I just have monitoring software open. Everything I cross-reference with GPU-Z and Wattman because unfortunately, GPU-Z sometimes gets a little crossed. Now, we're going to go right into synthetics, starting with a 3D Mark Time Spy. We're doing the normal one here. And unfortunately, this guy's picking up the rear at 77.74, so about 50 points behind the Challenger, which is 30 points behind the Pulse. Now, moving over into Final Fantasy XIV Shadowbringers, we kind of flip-flop here. We have the Mech OC on top at 17.191 at 1080p, a nice 200, almost yeah, 300 points ahead of the Pulse, which is about 50 points ahead of the uh, ASRock. And at, 10, at 14, that was at 1080p, 1440p, it edges out a small win, about 30, 40 points. But super position, we kind of sort of revert back to the old one. So 1080p, we're in the middle of the pack, the 11031. But at 1440p, we're at 6952. So it does fall in the back there, only by near margin of error. But it did consistently show a little bit slower. Moving into games, Ghost Recon Wildlands, the first one we're going to take a look at. We have, unfortunately, the Mech OC picking up the rear, 88.56 uh, FPS at 1080p. At 1440p, it did get in the middle there at 71.12. The Division 2, um, kind of similar story. So 1080p, we were at 111, so it was tied with the Sapphire Pulse, but 81 tied with the Challenger at 1440p. So basically, literally slot in the middle there. Moving over to Forza Horizon 4 Ultra Settings, it picked up the rear on both scenarios, one point behind the 1440 and two points behind the Pulse at um, 1080p there. Two more games, F1 2018 is one of them, and it did not perform very well consistently, three FPS behind. This was a repeatable benchmark. It also had issues when overclocking, there's no overclocking benchmarks here, that it wouldn't really run this benchmark overclock. So this card and this benchmark do not agree with each other. But three FPS behind on both. Lastly, we have the Hitman 2 um, scoring last at 1080p, but 1440p it actually scored first, but almost margin of error, but a little bit of separation. Now, power. Boost up to 1730. 1,056 millivolts at stock, so 1.056 volts, the highest of any of the cards that I've tested, RX 5700s. Power target only went up 10%, but draw according to GPU-Z got up to 162 watts at stock, under voltage, which I'll show you here in a minute, got up to about 155. But it only has that single A pin, which is really weird, and I'll show you that in a teardown here. So less potential maximum power draw, 
but it's drawing more. So that's an MSI design. Unfortunately, it didn't show any real performance gains. So, you know, so that's kind of going into the next one, which is temperatures. So we basically <clears throat> have more power, more electrical current, more temperatures, not as much performance. So the only thing that kind of got annoying was the um, <clears throat> memory temp. Got the 61 degrees over ambient, about 84 degrees. Well within spec, but a little bit on the warm side. Hotspot was a little bit cooler than Challenger 63, which was 86 degrees, 63 over ambient. The core clock did really well, 44 degrees over ambient, and the VRM actually did the worst, 47. But how about we undervolt it? That worked with the other cards, right? It should work with this card, right? No, no, it, it, it didn't. Undervolting saved us on the memory a little bit. <clears throat> did not save us in the hotspot. Increase the core, increase the VRM. Now, that being said, I'm just running through standard tests and trying to generate the heat over ambient. Basically, there really wasn't any measurable difference. Now, the question is, is that let's take apart the card and let's see if we can see with our eyes why this card ran not hot, but warmer than what I believe it should. It's interesting to note, this only has a single A-pin power connector. It has one, two, three display ports, one HDMI. And just looking at it here, we have a thermal pad under the, the VRM and we can see some thermal pads and they look to be smaller on the uh, GDDR6 and that might lead to why the, v, um, uh, the memory, sorry, the, um, ran a little bit warmer than what I would personally like. We have the two twin fans here. These are perfect size here. We have a total of one, two, three copper or heat pipes there, then two over here for a total of should be five. Let's go ahead and take this bad boy apart here. I started to do it, then I wanted to uh, actually do a quick overview of the card. There's that. There's that. There's that. And then let's go ahead and detach the fan here. This will come right off just like that. Are you serious right now? Uh, are, are you serious? What, what are those? Like, good, 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 good. What is that? So there we have our answer. Why these memory chips ran a bit warmer than the other two cards. I guarantee it's right there. Like these are not too bad. They probably shouldn't flip no, turn, to be honest, and I don't know, but this thermal paste application isn't that great either. You know, this is the die right here, so it's actually pretty important that you don't put too much on. So thank you, MSI. We are going to have another video to do because these. Like if if it was all like this, I would have been fine. Okay. But these unacceptable, 100% unacceptable. So Thermal Grizzly, I'm ordering stuff from you. Really disappointing because you can see here, the thermal pads here touch basically their own heat pipe. Well, this one isn't, but this one's a heat pipe going through it. And the two up there, the ones that are most important hit there. And I, I just, I don't get it. This is the time of the video where as a tech reviewer, I have to tell you, should you buy this card? Maybe. So I'm not happy with the thermal pad issue. Clearly, I'm not. However, just putting the card in the computer, running the stock AMD fan curve, which is what I do with all of them. I don't normalize it. By the way, um, noise came under 40 dBA with the stock AMD fan curve, which caps at like 65%. It's fine. This case isn't known for airflow, right? It's a silence optimized case. The VRM hit about 86, 87 degrees, which is still, I mean, subtract out 23. So we're, we were 63 degrees over ambient, I believe is where we're at. Or um, with the VRM though, it was 84, so it was, it was 61, which is well within spec. Just consider your ambient temperature, consider your case flow. 
and it just may not be the right card for you. If your ambient's 10 degrees warmer, if your case is worse, then you might want to consider the Pulse, which is just the best card overall, right? But if you have decent amount of airflow and you're not in a really hot area, this card's going to stay well within spec. Um, so it's kind, it's kind of a catch-22. Uh, overclocking, a lot of issues. Um, just could not get a stable overclock, and I didn't spend too much time on it. Another video, stay tuned. I'm also going to be replacing the thermal pads to see if that helps as well. So that'll be another video. Thank you, MSI, for that. Three videos out of one. But my, my point has always been is if you take the card, plug into a system, maybe just tweak the fan curve or set a standard fan curve, does it work? Yes. Does it overheat? No. We'll push a lot of frames. Yes. Is this good as the Pulse? No. Is this good as a Challenger? My opinion, no. They're both better cards. They're also a little cheaper. But it comes down to what you can get your hands on. If this is the only card available, and you know the other criteria such as ambient case cooling is not a big, is not the, the uh, bottleneck for you. Rather, it's an okay card. I would still lean towards the Pulse or the Challenger. I'm going to hold on to this to see if I can make it a better card. Don't get me wrong, but I, I would say it's an okay buy. So if you want to buy, link in the description below for this or the other two cards. Um, it might be hard to find an MSRP on Amazon, so keep that in mind. Um, but if you liked the video, hit the like button, disliked, hit the dislike button, but leave a comment, get subscribed, and as always, God, I sound like Linus. Hit the dislike button if you disliked it. If you liked it, hit the like button, get subscribed, leave a comment, donate on Patreon area, it doesn't sound like Linus, and plus I don't have merch to pimp either. I do love his content though. Uh, but as always, Steve from Big Head Tech, I'll see you all later on down the road.